Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is welding inspector question. This question total 60 question is here and this question is very helpful for the those are one to attend the welding inspector interview. Then this question are very helpful and this question I am taking from the some of the good companies and like sale you can tell British Petroleum and the Saudi Aramco these questions definitely they will ask to you in Gulf and also India also the good companies in oil and gas petroleum industry as well as you can tell the good fabrication industry without this question your interview will not be complete so please be concentrated on the each questions this section have the this video have the 30 question the 30 question another another 30 question will be there or another 60 question will be there this total 60 or 90 question will be there this question are very helpful so these are the basic question you can say also the experienced people also sometimes this question sometimes they are misunderstood so that's why they giving the wrong answer so let's start the first question the first question is how many welding positions are there as for ASME section 9 QW 460 1.3 4, 5 and 6. If you go QW 461 .3, 4, 5 and 6 in ASME section 9, so how many welding positions are there in QW? So this is very important questions. Definitely they will ask to as the welding inspector you should know. So the answer is first we'll go the figure 461.3 groove welds in plate. You see groove welds in plate test position. So this is called the groove weld. You see here the groove weld how it looks like you see here the groove weld here here so this is called the groove weld so groove weld you see four position 1g 2g 3g and 4g 1g is the flat position you see here the flat position this position and 2g is the horizontal position this is the horizontal position and this is the vertical position is called the 3g and you do welding like this way this way then it is called the overhead position the core position is there in 461.3 groove walls in plate now we'll go for groove walls in pipe if you pipe if you see the four position also there 1g rotated means pipe will be rotated and you will be do you will welding you will do welding and then again you rotate then again you do welding in 2g you see the horizontal position you do welding like this way and 5g is the fixed position pipe will be fixed this pipe will be fixed this will not be rotated so you will do hair welding then after that again you side you have to go this side and then again means you have to move so understand 1g 2g 5g and last is the 6g 6g is 45 percent 45 degree is the you see welding position this is your axis so 1g 2g 5g and 6g this is the group welds in pipe now will the position will go the fillet welds in plate in plate you see also four position one if this is the flat position your vertical is the you see the vertical your axis is the old axis is the vertical one if two if you see old axis is the horizontal from here to here this is the horizontal three f you see here the vertical position is the vertical well position is vertical and this is the overhead you see the overhead so you do welding overhead you see so the four position you understand here the fillet holes in plate 1f 2f 3f and 4f so when you are they are asking the question in the position so you have to ask the question of the answer sorry you have to tell the answer for for all position it means fillet holes and groove holes in plate and pipe both in see here the fillet holes in pipe test position in the fillet weld you see 45 degree also here the 45 degree here also 45 degree you see here this is called the 2f this is called 1f this is called 1f this is called 2f and this is called 2f r okay so this is the three position now if you go this position 4f and 5f so how many position is there here also 4f and this is the 5f so five position is there in fillet holes in pipe so you understand the five position first question is done you understand the first question the what is welding position or how many welding position is there in plate and fillet so question number two if the welder qualified in the p number one material what are the material he is qualified this is a very important question 
if the welder qualified in the p number 1 material what are the material is qualified what will be the answer see here answer is if you go qw 423.1 when a base metal shown in the left column so you see here when is the base metal shown in the left column the table is used for the welder qualification the welder qualified to weld all combination of base metal shown in the right column so including the unassigned uh, metal of similar chemical composition of this metal so p number one is qualified so definitely he is qualified for all you understand means p number one through p number 15 a p number 13 p number 41 through p number 49 so if he is qualified for any of this base metal p number one means that's why i mentioned here when a base metal shown in the left column the table is used for older qualification the welder is qualified to weld all combination of base metal means if the all combination of base metal he can do the welding so understand the second question question number three what is the joint details explain you see this is the joint they will give you one sketch in your exam paper maybe in your front the uh, white paper so what will be the answer this is called the you will be answered your answer will be this is called the included angle this is called the this is called the root face okay root face and this is called the this is called the root this is called the root so this is called the included angle this is called the root face and this is called the root gap so root gap this is called the root gap so three things here is included angle this is the included angle this is the you can say you can say also bevel angle bevel angle this one called bevel angle this is called the root face and this is called the root gap so you understand the joint explain so what is question number four how much internal misalignment allowed so this is the question is very confusion you cannot see in as may be 31.3 also not mentioned the internal misalignment you see answer is shall not exceed 1.5 mm as it is followed the thumb rule so you are followed a thumb rule in shall not exit 1.5 mm but but you can see here in remark offset or misalignment as per wps as specified in the client specification so always offset and misalignment you have check in your wps it is specified and it is mentioned in the client specification and b31.3 what is saying b31.3 only saying that recommend the tapering for unequal thickness or diameter so you understand that they are mentioning only b31.3 tapering and unequal thickness of diameter or diameter so the shall not exit the 1.5 mm is the thumb rule question number four is finished now question number five now question number five is give example of carbon steel grade material for pipe elbow flange bolt and knot so you have to give one example for each of the materials like pipe pipe you have you can tell as astm a 106 grade b fei 5l grade b astm a5 a53 grade b so pipe there are so many grades for the carbon steel elbow astm a234 to wpb Plank is ASTM A105N, bolt is ASTM A1193B7, and nut is ASTM A1942H. So, this is the question they will ask to you. So, you have to remember for each material minimum one grades. Okay? So, question number six now. Give example of LT carbon steel, low temperature carbon steel grade material for pipe elbow flange bolt. So, this is the normal carbon steel. Now, it will go to the low temperature carbon steel low temperature carbon steel is pipe elbow flange bolt and nut pipe is astm a333 grade 6 elbow is astm a420 wpl6 38 and 9 flange is astm a355 a350 lf2 and bolt is astm a320 grade l7m and nut is astm a194 grade 7m also you have to remember this type of grade in your mind definitely they will ask this question and you have to answer this one Question number seven, give example of SS steel grade material for pipe, elbow and plane. So this is SS steel. So first is carbon steel, second is low temperature carbon steel and thus now is SS steel. Answer is pipe, you have to choose ASTM A312 TP316L and ASTM A312 TP304L also. 
elbow you can choose astm a403 wp316l and astm a403 wp304l plain is astm a182 316l and astm a182 f304l so you have to remember this type of grades in your mind question number 7 is done question number 8 what is heat input formula this is the very important formula you have to know heat input you can express in joule per inch or joule per mm so voltage into ampere into 60 divided by travel speed that is in coming in mm per minute or in mm per minute travel speed or inch per mm so there is three things you need to know for heat input calculation voltage ampere h and travel speed then you can calculate the heat input so this is the heat input formula so question number nine is what is carbon steel minimum charge impact absorber energy so carbon steel what is the minimum charge impact energy requirement for carbon steel so answer is if you go as as per acs w011 so i am taking this quote from the aramco standard aces so there i am going union standard there is mentioned the minimum absorb energy of p number one grade number one material shall be 34 by 27 joule or for grade 2 shall be 40 by 32 joule for full size 10 into 10 mm specimen for both weld and the heat affected so you understand the p1 grade 1 material minimum charge impact energy requirement as per acs w011 so question number 9 is done question number 10 what is welder weekly repair rate this is very important question welder weekly repair rate you should know shall not exceed two percent in in the one week so in one week it should not be two percent more shall not exit it should not be exit two percent formula is rr equal to lr by lw into 100 so rr means repair rate and lr means welders total length of repair for one week so in one week the total repair of the welder and lw means welder total length of weld radiographic for the one week so one week total length of weld radiographic and requirement is welder total length of repair in one week so lr divided by lw into 100 that is the coming is the how much the percentage of weekly repair rate so you should understand and you should remember this answer question number 11 what is essential variable this is very important question I just explained this one in the previous video so you can check in my previous video in how to prepare the WPS it is explained in properly so essential variable what is this I am giving one gist here when a change welding position which will affect the mechanical properties of weld that is essential variable variable so you can see in the WPS there are three variable is there essential variable non essential variable and the supplemented essential variable in essential variable what will happen if you change in essential variable there are so many parameters are there if you change their parameter that parameter then definitely you have to change the mechanical properties that will affect the mechan mechanical property means you are changing the welding position sorry you are changing the essential variable then definitely you have to make the new WPS that is most important thing so you are changing the essential variables you need to make the new WPS so what is the example welding process base metal filler metal preheat pwht welding position all these things are comes under essential variable question number 11 is done now question number 12 what is non essential variable so non essential variable is simple non essential variable are variable those cannot change those if you change non essential variable then it will not affect the any mechanical property means you no need to change any WPS so non so non essential variables it will not affect anything regarding the mechanical properties of the old metal so that is called the non essential variable like joint design method of backing cleaning so all these things come under the non essential question number 13 what is supplemented essential variable supplemented essential variables you can say also it's a one type of essential variable that's when a change holding position sorry change welding condition which will affect the notch toughness properties of weld metal that is supplementary essential variable so if you are change anything in welding condition if it is affect your notch toughness properties definitely you need to change your WPS that is called supplementary essential variable so supplementary essential variable variable means 
it is affecting your non stuffness properties question number 14 what is following standard for api 510 is asme b 31.1 asme b 31.3 asme section 2 asme section 5 asme section 8 and asme section 9 so as a welding inspector you should know all the standard what is this api 510 you have to go so answer is api 510 pressure vessel inspection code asme b 31.3 process piping ASME B31.1 power piping, ASME section 2 part C that is called welding rods, electrodes, filler metal, ASME section 5 non destructive examination, ASME section 8 is rules for construction of the pressure vessel, and ASME section 9 welding and bridging qualification. This code you have to know very well, minimum you have to know that what code, what is the requirement, what is the abbreviation of this code. So question number 14 is done. Question number 15. What is WPS? Answer. Welding procedure specification. It's a written welding document. It's guide for the welder to make the good production oil and give the range of parameters readings. I already told in previous video regarding the WPS making. Welding procedure specification is a WPS. Just is a simple way you can tell the in the site what are the WPS are there the welder should follow that WPS welding procedures specification and they follow the all the parameters then it comes the sound weld so it's make the good production weld always we follow the WPS so give the range of parameter readings so you understand the WPS meaning question number 16 what is PQA PQA is Procedure qualification record, it's a mother of WPS. Procedure qualification record, definitely it's a mother of WPS, means all records should be recorded. All testing should be recorded. So question number 16, what is PQA? The answer is PQA is procedure qualification record. It's a mother of WPS. It's used to make the WPS give in the actual parameter reading. In PQA, always you have to check there is the actual parameter is there and after finalization of PQA all the test is accepted accepted then you have to make the final WPS that is called the PQA question number 17 what is P number this is very important question P number base metal are assigned the P number in ASME section 9 to reduce the number of welding procedure qualification Required for ferrous base metal having specified impact test requirement group number within P number are assigned. The arrangement based on comparable base metal characteristics such as composition, weldability, and mechanical property. Definitely, P number we are using to reduce the welding procedure qualification is required. So, there are so many B P number is there, so there are categorized the P number. So, in, in that case, we reduce the number of welder qualification, welding qualification, welding procedure qualification. A complete list of P number assignments provided in QW code 22 of ASME section 9. You see here, you see here the P number steel and steel alloy, P number 1 through P number 15F, aluminium, aluminium alloy, P number 21 through P number 26, copper and copper base alloy, P number 31 to P number 35, nickel and nickel base alloy, P number 41 to P number 49. Keep your mind all these things because in ASME section 9 some things are there you have to keep in your mind then you can answer the questions Co what is p number you understand now question number 18 what is a number a number to reduce the number of welding procedure qualification steel and steel alloy filler metal are also grouped means there is p number is group for base metal and for filler metal also there is a group number is there because of to reduce the welding procedure qualification so they are a number a number based on the chemical composition of the deposited weld metal so chemical composition of the deposited weld metal means after welding there is a weld metal is there that deposited that is called the deposited weld metal and that chemical composition question number 19 what is the difference between the 316 and 316L material simply only carbon content is different. 316 is low carbon content and if you go 316 carbon steel maximum is 0.08% and 316 L carbon level is 
maximum is 0.03 percent this is the only different in 316 and 316 cell material question number 20 what is the difference between e7018 and 70181 the answer is e7018 one, one is the requirement for the chartree v notch impact toughness at lower temperature so lower temperature it is required the chartree v notch impact that is called that is why it is the special requirement one is re mentioned E70181 has a better toughness at very sub zero temperature. So, question number 20 is done. Question number 21 What is the difference between the GTAW and GMAW? Answer is GTAW use the gas of full 100% argon gas. So, GTAW, when we are using, that is totally 100% argon gas. But in GMAW, use the gas, it is 50% argon and 50% helium gas. So you understand first GTAW using the 100% argon and GMAW is the mixture of argon and helium gas and GMAW use the extremely usage for it can weld all types of ferrous and non ferrous material of all thickness. So you understand the GTAW and GMAW what is the main difference. Question number 22. What is the electrode using CS, SS, alloy steel in process of GTAW and SMW? What is the electrode used? Answer if you go CS, then we can use GTAW ER70H2, SMAW E7018 and E7081. So, this is the basic question. Sometimes you also forget, but you have to remember in CS, SS, alloy steel process, which electrode you are using. In SS, if you see GTAW ER316L, and in alloy, GTAW ER80XB6 and SMAW E8015B6. So, you have to remember this electrode. Question number 23. What is the difference between 304 and 316 cell material? Three or sorry, 316 material. Answer is molybdenum presence in 304 it is nil. There is not any percentage is there. In 316, if you go, molybdenum is 2 to 3 percent. This is the basic difference in 304 and 316 material. Question number 24. Why need to start high frequency in GTAW process in SS material? Why need? high frequency why need in GTW process in SS material because to avoid defects in the root so should there is maybe problem in root that's why to avoid defects that's why needs the high frequency to get a better deposit chemistry so better deposit chemistry means chemical composition will get the good quality so this is the two reason for the need to start high frequency so question number 24 is done question number 25 the low hydrogen electrode why use the repacking only one time answer this is a very important question minimum content in electrode will be evaluated so if you see if you are repacking again and again then you cannot know how many electrode is there and you cannot evaluate it so only one time that's why hydrogen electrode low hydrogen electrode use the only one time repacking Minimum content in electrode will be evaluated and toughness will be decreased. So toughness there will be definitely will be decreased. Why if you use the repacking? Question number 26. What is welded essential variable? So, so many people asking this question. What is welded essential variable? Welding process, welding position, filler metal, welding technique and polarity. Those are in procedure qualification record that essential variable, same variable you can use this one for older essential variable welding process position filler metal welding technique polarity this is called the older essential variable question number 27 if welder qualified in 5g and 6g position how may how many bend test request the question is something tricky you see here welder qualified in 5g and 6g position how many bend test is required so firstly you should know Bend test requirement as per as section 9 it depends upon the coupon thickness which are used in the WPS. So always it depends upon the thickness of coupon. If coupon thickness is less than 19 mm, only two tension, two face bend and two road bend is enough. If you go in coupon thickness is more than 19 mm in WPS, then definitely tension, tension test two numbers and side bend test four numbers is required. So question number 27 you understand this is a tricky question. Question number 28, if welder qualified in the fillet oil, what is the NGD test is required? Definitely, macro test and the fracture test is required for fillet oil. Question number 29, what is welding inspector responsibility? This is very important, you have to make a gist answer, not only too many uh, topics. If you go answer simply to monitor the all welding activities, then record and compare acceptance criteria, definitely. 
you are a welding inspector you have to check all welding activities and then you have to record all these things and you have to compare that acceptance criteria as per code and standard and requested the NDT people to test and monitor and to test and monitor the older performance and site this is our work to monitor the older performance how it is older performance at site so this is the answer of question number 29 question number 30 this is the last question which defects can you find in sur find on surface area which defect answer is arc strike surface crack undercut surface porosity spatter mechanical damage these are the six the main surface area defect you can find out in your welding surface question number 30 is done so this 1 to 30 is very important questions and you have to remember some questions like code and standard so all questions are very helpful for the welding inspector again the next video is coming uh, one, within one or two days the welding inspector another 30 question is basically important question without this question i promise this welding inspector interview will not be complete thanks a lot and those people still not subscribe my channel please subscribe then you will not miss any videos in future thanks for watching this is my youtube link you see here so you have to you can go this youtube link in my description page and you can just subscribe please like share and subscribe then you will not miss any videos thanks a lot take care and see you soon in my next video take care